Hi everyone, thanks for checking out today's Multiphonic A Day video. My name is Ben, I'm a bassoonist based in Chicago, and I've been making one of these videos every day that I'm in self-isolation during the COVID-19 pandemic. Today is Thursday, April 16th, 2020. Today is day 33 of self-isolation for me, and this is episode 31 of Multiphonic A Day. I'm sad to report that this is going to be my last daily video of Multiphonics for a little while. I've really enjoyed making these videos, but they've also taken me a lot of time, and I have a dissertation to write among some other things on my plate. So from here on forward, I still have a couple other videos that I'm planning to do. I have some things that I want to show, and also a couple interviews with people coming up. So I'll be posting those intermittently, and I guess from now on it'll be uh, Multiphonic every now and then. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to show one thing today for the last video for now, which is something that I'm calling multiphonic and timbral scales. And this is a technique that I've encountered in a couple of contemporary pieces um, by composers including Zach Sheets and Lisa Lim and Pierluigi Bellone. And I think it's a really uh, fascinating and effective technique. Essentially, what it is is playing a scale with one fingering removed. So it's as if you're preparing the bassoon by leaving off one finger intentionally. And I'm going to show you five different ones today and um, let you hear them in a couple of different contexts. So for the first one, I'm just going to be playing a chromatic scale down starting on an open F, that's F3, but I'm going to be leaving off the first finger of my left hand for all of these notes. And you'll hear that it produces a series of timbral variations and then occasionally a multiphonic will pop out. It sounds like this. So what I really love about this technique in addition to the seemingly random, of course it's not random, but the occasional outbursts of multiphonics is the way that uh, a couple times through the scale it kind of restarts, it jumps back up to a higher harmonic again. And I find that happens to varying degrees with all of the different ones that I'm going to show you today. Next, this is going to be fairly systematic. I'm just going to do the same thing, but I'm going to start on a C sharp and I'm going to leave off uh, the second finger. So I'm starting on the C-sharp because that's the first fingering below the D, which would be one, two. Now I'll continue the pattern. I'm just going to leave off the third finger. So starting on B2, all right, B2. Now I'm going to leave off the first finger of my right hand, starting on the C and going down, skipping the B natural, of course. And finally, I'm going to leave off the second finger of my right hand. Now, of course, it's possible to do this with any of the fingers or keys of the bassoon. If you just choose to leave one uh, open, that should normally be closed. Or you can also just add a single key to um, an otherwise scalar passage, like if this works pretty well with the B-flat key or with the E-flat trill key on the boot here. But these are just five of the ones that are uh, conceptually and ergonomically the most sensible, I think. So of course, since you're just playing a chromatic scale, it's possible to play these uh, fairly quickly without too much effort. It's just a question of getting used to leaving that one key up. And I find that Often when playing these quickly, uh, there's some interesting interference that comes in. It's not quite as clean as, not that the first ones are clean, but it's not quite as distinct 
and sometimes uh, tends to get stuck in a certain harmonic and then have a more dramatic break. So I'll show you some of that now. This is with uh, leaving up the first finger of the left hand. So you can hear that sometimes it really skips up into a higher register and sometimes it tends to get stuck in a certain zone. So there, that of course can be controlled with the embouchure and the air pressure, but the faster that it gets going, the trickier it is to specifically change the embouchure in the ways that are necessary for those distinct changes between specific pitches. Another thing that works really beautifully, I think, with these is to play them very softly with a great deal of embouchure pressure, so a little bit further up on the reed and squeezing to get the whole thing to be up in one uh, harmonic zone. And I like to do that especially with leaving off the third finger of the left hand and the first finger of the right hand. So I'll, I'll show you with the left hand first. <laughs> So I just I just really love these the strange otherworldly quality that that gets and also the role that the distinct key clicks play. I should maybe oil some of the keys on my bassoon, but some of that is unavoidable. I'm going to do the same thing with the first finger of my right hand now. And then transitioning back and forth between the two of them. So it can also be really effective to just have shorter chunks of the scale. You don't have to absolutely go all the way down to the low B flat, which by the way is the, the lowest pitch that I'm going down to in all of these chromatic scales. You also, of course, don't have to make the chromatic scale as possible um, to skip uh, notes just as just as easily. I'm just doing that for the sake of covering all the notes there and because it gives the full range of possibilities of those fingerings. So this is effect, an effect that I think can be uh, really well used in a lot of different contexts. I'm going to just play around a little bit, shifting in between uh, different scales of this and um, playing around with some different dynamics, some different amateur pressures to try and tickle out some of the different characteristics of these. So thanks for watching today. Uh, I'll be back sometime next week with another video, and if you have any requests, any comments going forward, please leave them for me below, as always. Thanks.